You came to this video because you want to know where to start as a beginner in programming. Let's be honest, programming is vast, it can be hard to find your path. There's a lot of languages out there, and each language has its own capabilities. So you'll ask, what should I choose? The answer is, it all depends on what you need. What I mean is, what career you're trying to follow, or what project you want to build. However, you can tell me that you still don't know and you're exploring your options. No matter what is your purpose of starting programming, this video will answer your questions. First, programming is a wide and profitable field due to its high demand. It allows you to become a software engineer who creates applications, websites and software solutions, or a cybersecurity analyst who protects computer systems and networks, or a machine learning engineer who builds and deploys machine learning systems, or maybe a freelance programmer. You have a specific skill and service you'll offer to the ones in need. Now, if I continue to tell you what programming can offer, I'll stay till tomorrow. But what you need to know is programming opens for you a wide range of opportunities. Now, I want to offer you a few terminologies that you need to know and you'll see them quite a lot. Starting with low-level languages. These languages tend to be closer to hardware, offering more control to hardware components like memory manipulation. However, high-level languages tend to be more friendly because they allow the programmer not to get involved in the hardware specifics. Another thing is compiled languages, which means the code is translated to machine language which can be directly read by the CPU. However, we have also interpreted languages, which converts code to bytecode, which is a set of binary instructions, which is then fed to the virtual machine, which translates it to machine language. Also, some languages are statically typed, which means that the programmer should specify the type of data when creating it versus other languages that can be dynamically typed, which means the type of data is determined during runtime. Now these terminologies might seem weird, but it's good to know them as a programmer, because you'll hear them quite a lot, and definitely there's other terminologies to discover. Now, how to actually start programming? I know I mentioned at the beginning that you need to know where you are heading, like what's your purpose, what's the career you want to follow, or maybe you don't know what you want to do. No matter what's your reason, I recommend you to start with Python. This is my opinion, others may tell you to start with a different language, but why am I telling you to start with Python? That's because Python is considered to be the easiest language for those who are just starting out. Due to its easy and understandable syntax, Python is able to introduce you to the concepts of programming, like variables, which can store different data types, and the most common data types among all languages are numbers, texts, and booleans. Other than that, it will introduce you to functions, loops like the while loop and the for loop, and it will teach you how to code using classes and objects. These terms are really important in the world of programming. But why am I encouraging Python? Listen up. Every language will teach you the fundamentals of programming. I can tell you to go learn how to code for the first time using C, but it will be a hard start. C is kind of a hard language, and you're still new to programming. It will oblige you to put 10 times the effort you'll put learning Python. I encourage you to learn Python in 6 or 7 months. Go on YouTube and search for Python tutorials. I recommend FreeCodeCamp.org and Telusco. Or you can visit my Python playlist mentioned in the description. However, during this period where you'll be constantly learning Python and the concepts of programming, don't just stick on tutorials. Try to work on projects and exercises, like building a guessing game, or a hangman game, or a password generator. They may seem hard for now, but if you learn Python correctly, they'll be easier than you think. Now, why am I encouraging exercises? Well, because practice makes perfect and it will give you a taste of how it feels and how to think like a programmer. Also, try to discover where you want to be or what you want to do. Because let's face it, you are learning programming languages not just for fun or because you love it or it is a valuable skill. Definitely, you want to make something out of it. If you want to get a job, you'll be assigned in this company to be, for example, a backend developer, who is responsible for the server side of applications. You won't be assigned as a programmer only, you will be either a cybersecurity specialist or a data scientist or a full stack developer. So I recommend you start learning Python and discover which domain suits you the best. Now, after learning Python and learning the fundamentals of programming and discovering which industry you'll pursue, it is the time to choose other languages. What are the languages to choose? Well, it depends on your specialty. Do you want to be a front-end developer or web developer? Then you'll choose HTML and CSS, who respectively allow you to build the skeleton of a web page and add some designs to it. Then you'll learn JavaScript, and then web development frameworks like React, 
and CSS preprocessors like SAS. If you want to become a backend developer, you'll learn languages like Java, Python, or Rust. These languages are portable, meaning they can run on various operating systems, which is crucial for server-side applications. Then you'll learn the frameworks associated with them, like Java has Spring and Python has the Django. What about a data scientist? You'll learn languages like Python and R that assist you in data manipulation and learn TensorFlow and Keras for machine learning. You'll also learn how to manage data storage using MySQL and MongoDB. See, each specialty needs a language or even more tools. Like Python is known to be used for AI and machine learning. We also mentioned data science earlier. Compared to Java, for example, it's used to build desktop applications, enterprise apps, or games like Minecraft was built using Java. However, some languages like C can be more powerful than others. C is the lowest level language among all other languages. It can be used to create operating systems or compilers for other languages. So by now, I think you have a small understanding about some terminologies like low-level languages or high-level languages, compiled and interpreted languages, and static typing and dynamic. Also, you have some knowledge on different jobs available for you to enroll in, where to start, especially on how to start programming by learning Python and finding your industry. Now, the purpose of this video was to offer you a path and help you to start in case you were lost. I didn't go in depth about the terminologies and what each job can offer you because this is out of the context of this video. Thanks for watching, I wish you the best of luck, programming is a great journey so stick with it. I recommend you to watch this video, which will shed the light on some mistakes you programmers do so you can avoid. Or check this video out to see what are the 6 free websites that will teach you code completely free.